Fantastic. Thanks ever so much, Chris. That's lovely. So uh, I am coming straight from the uh, the UK as we speak, although you wouldn't know with my background, but uh, but there we are. But you have to just believe me and you'll probably hear from my accent as well. I'm from the UK. So thanks ever so much for this opportunity um, to take part in your amazing event. I've really enjoyed all the presentations so far and I'm going to now crack on. So my background is I was a languages teacher for 13 years. I taught French at uh, secondary school level for three years and then 10 years at middle school level on the Isle of Wight. Uh, so at the middle school level, I was working with nine to 13 year olds. And for the last 13 years, I've been an independent languages consultant, uh, traveling around the world, running training and speaking at conferences here, there and everywhere. My Twitter handle is on the uh, page. If you want to follow me, if you're not already, feel free to do so. And likewise, my email address is there as well. Uh, and I know that obviously we're recording this right now and my presentation will be shared with everyone as well. So I've only got 20 minutes, so I'm going to crack on. Um, so to start off with, um, I'm sure we all know about what a large language model is and what ChatGPT is, but how can it be used particularly in languages? So in this uh, very short presentation, I'm going to show you how you can use it for a number of different uh, uh, outcomes, how you can produce different texts, for example, um, such as narrow reading text, gap fill text, um, uh, pen pal letters, uh, that sort of thing. And I'm also going to be showing you a couple of Chrome extensions, which allow you to do things like um, produce prompts more quickly, as well as practicing speaking as well. OK, so let's carry on. So with that in mind, I'm going to show you a number of different ways in which we can create personalized text. I think that that's something that ChatGPT does really, really well. Um, I'm going to show you how you can um, use ChatGPT to generate writing prompts. And as I said, some different voice exercises for pronunciation practice as well. So with that in mind, I'm going to come out of my presentation and go straight to ChatGPT, which I've got here. Um, you'll see, for those people who are familiar with the interface, that uh, there's a couple of things which are a little bit different here. Here I've got a Chrome extension called uh, Prompt Storm, uh, which I'm not actually going to use today, but it's quite an interesting extension. This one I'm going to use today, which is called Voice Control for ChatGPT, which is this one here. I'll put this in the chat for you. Um, I find this incredibly useful in the way that you can uh, use your voice to uh, prompt ChatGPT. You can also change the language. You can see I've got it on English UK at the moment, but you've got a range of languages here, and you can even have it uh, speaking back to you as well, which I'll demonstrate a bit later on. The other Chrome extension I wanted to uh, mention is this one called Canned Replies, which I heard about from Rachel Lucas from the States, who um, is a Spanish teacher and, and uh, runs a, an academy to do with languages and technology. You can find her very easily on, on Facebook. And she did this like five minute clip um, around canned replies and ChatGPT, which I thought was really inspiring. So I'll demonstrate that uh, live in a second. So to begin with, let's just uh, go through it. I'm going to right click here. Click canned replies, as you can see, and now I've got access to all the different prompts, which I'm going to be showing with you today. So we're going to start off with create a lesson plan. And you can see that it says create a lesson plan for teaching the perfect tense in English aimed at eight year olds, including learning objectives and differentiated activities. OK, so I've adapted all of these prompts so they're aimed at an English uh, audience um, or teaching English as a, as a second language. So you can see it's um, it's created a lesson plan really quickly with materials, with different suggestions. And now if I wanted to, I could now use my voice like this. I could say, uh, thank you. I've got a couple of students who are dyslexic. Can you recommend some strategies to support them, please? OK, so using my voice is so much quicker. It's now giving me some suggestions on a multi-sensory approach, phonics instruction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. OK, I could then do something else. I'd like to use some technology in my lessons as well as offer some independent practice for students at home. Could you recommend some tools which I could use to help with this lesson, please? OK, so now it's giving me the names of different tools. And obviously, some of these will be free. Some of these you'll have to pay for, et cetera. And I can now look at that in more detail and then choose um, what I want to use. Now, it might be that you know a lot of these tools already, but I think that's absolutely fine. It can just be a way of uh, kickstarting your, your thought process and thinking, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Of course, I could use that. Or it's just a, a great way of promoting creativity, I think. So that's a really, really easy way to uh, create a lesson plan. Uh, the next idea I'm going to show you is around uh, creating a rubric. So this time we're going to go to create a rubric and give feedback based on the rubric. So uh, you see again, I've written create a rubric in a table for marking an eight-year-old's written text about what he or she did last weekend, practicing the perfect and imperfect tenses in English. Create uh, three times 100 word text as an example with five deliberate mistakes in each one, making each text progressively more advanced. 
mark the text using the rubric and give feedback about the mistakes using examples in context. So again, I think that ChatGPT is very good at creating examples in context. So it's created a rubric uh, like this already. I know there's been lots of uh, discussion around this on sort of different Facebook groups, um, but I think this is a really handy uh, thing to do. Uh, it goes without saying that if we're going to input students' work, then we need to have um, a uh, an understanding around the privacy issues involved in that and the IP of the students. So we would need to have parental permission or certainly make sure that we are, are adhering to the uh, e-safety policy at the school. Uh, I can now click continue generating to carry on. So what it's doing is it's creating uh, a rubric. It's made uh, the different levels of text based on what I've asked it to do. It's now giving me uh, feedback in context based on uh, the text that it, it has produced. But of course, you could ask it to, to uh, produce a rubric based on your own uh, rubric that you are using in your own department or in your own context. Um, if with permission, feed in students' work and then get it to give you feedback on that. So that's another quick way in which you can use um, chat GPT. Uh, I apologize if this is all obvious stuff. Um, another idea would be, say, for essay feedback. So here I've got a, a text here, which was actually originally in French, but I just translated it into English. So this is a French text, uh, so an English text around uh, David Beckham uh, playing for Paris Saint Germain at the time. And I'm asking uh, chat GPT to give me some feedback about it. So I'm going to send that to uh, chat GPT and now it's going to give me some feedback. Um, in context, and obviously we could all do this, but it's going to be a lot quicker uh, doing it in this sort of way, I would suggest. Okay, so there we are. That's given me some uh, some nice information. Another thing that you can do here is you can go through and copy this text like this. I could go to a new chat. I could paste it in. Uh, but first of all, I could write proof read this colon send it to ChatGPT, and then I'm going to click here where it says editing uh, disabled. It's now enabled editing, and I've got a Chrome extension called Edit GPT, which I will show you right now here. Edit GPT, and it's this one. And that allows you to turn ChatGPT into a, like a proofreading Grammarly type of tool, okay, which I think could be useful for whole class uh, feedback. So you could put in uh, some text, for example, from a student with permission. And now you can see that it's saying all the things it doesn't uh, like about here. So this has um, been written in red and then green. And all you have to do is go to the top and click the tick, and it will now change it to what it thinks it should be. So I think that this is a great way of uh, inspiring discussion with the class uh, on why it is that it doesn't like a few months before Fashion Week. It thinks that with Fashion Week just a few months away is better. And then once um, you've all agreed on why it is better, you can then obviously change it to what it thinks uh, is better. Yeah, so that's how that would work. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you get the idea. You'd have to remember to click editing disabled. Otherwise, it will try and do that for every single thing that you do uh, from now on. Um, let's use this voice control right now and let, let's have a bit of creative role play. I would like you to play the role of a waiter in an English cafe, please. I'm going to be practicing my English with you, and I want you to respond to me only in English. Are you ready? Okay, let's go for it. Okay. Hi there. Can I have a cup of coffee and a croissant, please? Oh, and I forgot to do something. I need to click on the loudspeaker icon. There we are. Now, now it'll read, read it back to me. Here we go. So, uh, so it said, uh, certainly a cup of coffee and a croissant. Would you like any specific type of coffee? Um, I'd like a medium latte, please. And for the croissant, could I have it with jam and butter? Certainly. One medium latte coming right up. And for the croissant, we can definitely serve it to you with jam and butter. It's a delightful combination. Please have a seat, and I'll bring your order to you shortly. Is there anything else I can assist you with while you wait? Yes, please. Could I have a glass of water, please? Because it's a very hot day. Absolutely. I completely understand. It's important to stay hydrated, especially on hot days. I'll bring you a refreshing glass of water right away. Here you go. If you need anything else, feel free to let me know. That's great. Thank you ever so much. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure to assist you.
If you have any further requests or if there's anything else I can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your coffee, croissant, and the rest of your day. There we are. So I've now turned that off. Um, otherwise, it will then uh, read back to you every single thing that you've put in from now on. So that's uh, how you can use it for uh, interacting. Another fun one to do with creativity is emoji sentences. So I want you to translate the sentences I write into emojis. I will write the sentence and you will express it with emojis. I just want you to express it with emojis. I don't want you to reply with anything but emojis. When I need to tell you something in English, I will do it by wrapping it in curly brackets like this. Are you ready for my first sentence? Now, the reason... Um, it keeps saying emojis because I uh, was I wanted it to translate into emojis as well. But at the same time, what I wanted it to do was uh, produce the exact uh, outcome I was looking for. And if the the issue I was finding was it was it wasn't quite doing what I was wanting wanting it to do. So eventually, when I, it did produce the um, the emoji translation, I then said to ChatGPT, "Could you please write a prompt which would produce this outcome, but will work?" with a uh, in a new chat because obviously as we know it, it remembers everything that's gone in a previous chat so uh, i want it to work in a new chat and that's the prompt that it then wrote for me okay so that's why it keeps saying emojis to make it really clear what what i want so now it's giving me a thumbs up with the emoji and the happy face so now i could write things like i went to the cinema with my friend okay and now it's going to give it to me in emojis like this so i can now copy this I could go to something like Wheel of Names, like this. If you don't know Wheel of Names, it's a really useful spinner. And I can now spin this, and then one of the ideas will come up, and I could then ask a student to uh, give me some uh, spoken language or written language about the emojis that come up. So here it could be, um, when it is sunny, I like to go to Italy by plane, uh, sit on the beach, and draw pictures of trees, for example. You get the idea, okay? And then you just spin again until you get the next one. So that's another nice idea, I think, with creativity and wheel of names. Okay, let's just wait for that to finish. There we are. And I can always click remove as well to uh, get rid of that one if I wanted to. Okay, let's go back to here and let's go for another one. So this time we're going to have a look at uh, fill in the blanks. Okay, so with the fill in the blanks one, I'm going to click here and it's going to give me a text like this. OK, and it's given me the number of different numbers here for the gaps and it's given me the different answers. Um, one thing I found, though, if you do the following. Could you please rewrite the text, but remove all the verbs? OK, so it hasn't done that, has it? Can you see it hasn't removed all the verbs? OK, so it's there are some things it does very well, and some things it doesn't do as well. So I'm going to do the following. Can you write the text with no blanks at all? OK, so now it's going to give me the text. OK, perfect. And I'm now going to copy this. Like that. And I'm going to go to a new page. And I'm going to go to wordwall.net. Uh, there we are. I click Create Activity like this. OK. And then I click on Missing Word. I put in Example Text. I paste in the text like this. And then all I, ha all I have to do is double click on the different uh, verbs. So in other words, I'm in complete control. And uh, the only thing you can't do is you can't have duplicates. OK, uh, I think that's probably every everyone. I'm, do I'm doing this really quick, so I may have made a mistake, but hopefully that's OK. And then there we are. And then all you've got to do is drag and drop them into the right order, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do all of them, but you get the idea. Submit answers. There we are. So it's a nice way of taking a text generated by ChatGPT and then um, uh, and then producing it as, a, uh, uh, as an activity. Can you let me know how long I've got to go? Have I got about five minutes, is it? Or have I got a little bit longer? Well, you've got a few more minutes, Joe. Okay, cool. Right, I'll do uh, another one, which I think is particularly cool, which is presentation outline, right? So here, I'm going to just post this in, and it's formatting the uh, presentation outline that I want, like this. And I'm just going to copy this right now, like that. Okay, I'm going to go into Word, and I'm going to paste it in, like that. And oh, let's just do that again. 
there we are because i want it with the formatting right now i'm not going to do all of this because it would take far too long but i'm just going to going to get rid of this but the process is the same all you have to do is go through and i've forgotten to put the title in but that's okay i'm just going to make sure this is all heading one so i'm going to go through click format painter like this and i'm just going to do this okay so this is how essentially i built the presentation i'm showing you right now and then i'm just going to go for the other bullet points like this oh let's get rid of that this this uh, that little um pop up there that's another chrome extension called use chat gpt uh which is amazing uh which i really really like as well uh this is going to be heading two there we are and then format painter like that like that and like that okay so i've got the format i want i then click file export export to powerpoint okay you then get a number of different um, themes you can click on more themes etc you get the idea and then you choose one that you like let's go for i don't know this one click export it now creates the the slides in literally seconds i click open presentation and that's using what's called powerpoint designer which is coming up right now there it is and as a result of that, you can see that it's automatically chosen the different um, icons to go with the text. I don't really like the colors, but I could obviously change that. OK, so I know that's been really quick, but I'm just going to finish off now. I've got a couple of minutes, if that's OK, just to, to finish off the presentation. So we looked at some ideas around gap filling, around using uh, your voice, uh, etc. Uh, obviously, you have to be careful about um, uh, bias. I would really re recommend a, a um, Netflix show called Coded Bias all around this. Uh, I've hopefully shown how easy it is to generate resources. Uh, I really hope that you found it useful. I'm just going to provide um, a few more resources for you if you're interested. So, for example, this is a, a YouTube, um, a little YouTube clip. I appeared on the uh, TESOL Pop podcast recently with Laura Wilkes and uh, this one. Is literally just 50 seconds do with this as well. on how sure you can use immersive reader GPT. with ChatGPT. Yeah. It's being really popular at the moment. <laughs> this week, when I, in a couple of webinars, um, I literally put in, you know, write a 100-word uh, text about Mickey Mouse's daily routine, for example, in simple English. It then generated that text. I was then able to highlight the text, um, launch immersive reader, and then have it read back to me. So just that on its own, I just think that has the... That, that sort of cool fact, but also that idea around differentiation that you can get it to create a text. You can even get it mm -hmm. to create comprehension questions if you want to, and then an answer key as well. It's all done for you. So yeah, lots and lots of potential in how you can use these different tools. That's incredible. A great benefit for learners and teachers, I can see there, if you're creating uh, materials for your learners to use. Okay, so that was using an little oh, trick that was to do with this as well. I'm, I'm sure that that was using an extension called Use Immersive Reader on uh, Use Immersive Reader on websites. Use Immersive Reader on websites is the extension. Um, I've appeared on about thirty podcasts since the start of the pandemic, and the last few have been around ChatGPT. Uh, you've got the Wakelet link there, so have a look at those if you're interested. Um, this is a, uh, a Wakelet I put together, which has got six hundred and five or something items on it to do with ChatGPT and education. So that will keep you busy, and. Uh, this is a Facebook group I, I created five days ago. It's already got 820 members. So join that if you'd like to. Um, and I'm also running a course, which is uh, started already, but you can always uh, get the recordings from the first session if you would like. It's not a free course, but you can see the prices there. Do uh, click on the link there. I'm doing that in collaboration with Avant Assessment. And there's four sessions, um, uh, lots of ideas I've shared already, lots of other new ideas. If you uh, find this interesting, do check that out as well. And thanks ever so much to um, the EdTech Symposium in English Australia for this opportunity. And, I, and I'm more than happy to take a few questions if you'd like me to as well. Great. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, we don't have any questions currently in the Q&A panel, but um, if anybody has some, feel free to shoot them through and um, Joe can go through those. Um, but regardless of not having questions, we do have a, a plethora of compliments and thank yous uh, in the chat, particularly thank with you. the extensions. I'm Good. certainly going to play around with those later on today. Um, thank you very much for your presentation, Joe. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you for the opportunity.